five. Simply about winning one game at a time, Obi, and of course it starts with the first one here. Boston College after a coaching change. Scott Spinelli taking over. One and two in his tenure. But this Duke team is also different over the last 12 games with Mark Williams in the starting lineup. They're a better defensive team. Still not a great defensive team, but yet. They start out the game with a turnover, which I'm sure Coach K not happy about. <laughs> Look at his starting five. Roach, Stewart, Hurt, Moore, and Williams. He's been raving about the play of Mark Williams, the seven-foot freshman. Look at Boston College. BC now under Scott Spinelli. Ashton Langford running the point. A couple of changes there. Karnick getting some playing time. A lot of changes for BC as a program, certainly. With Jim Christian being cut loose in the middle of February as Duke strikes right away. First bus bucket here by Williams. But different preparation for Scott Spinelli going up against Duke in this time compared to the game where they played in it's on January 6th. Mark Williams was not a factor in that game for the Blue Devils. Wendell Moore went off with 25 points, which is career for high for him. But since that time, Mark Williams has really been the anchor both defensively and offensively for this Blue Devil team going inside to him, opening up opportunities for his teammates. Uh, James Carnick going in strong. He's 6'9", the senior. Lehigh transfer and very capable of having a pretty good game. He had 20 against Syracuse. Well, Duke getting out to a quick start, no question about that. On uh, the shot by DJ Stewart. But also what we're seeing is a 2-2-1 pressure from the Blue Devils. Once they make shots, they are setting up that full court pressure, trying to see if they can speed up Boston College and force some turnovers. Uh, Duke had won four consecutive games and really looked like as Williams strikes again that they were starting to pull things together right before this three-game losing skid coming into the tournament. And Obi, one of the things when you look at the Blue Devils and where everyone is going to talk about five games in five days, can you make it happen? Of course, you've got to win the first one. But one of the things I think that will be important for Coach K throughout this this game especially is to play a lot of guys and keep minutes down for as many people as he can and even it out try to get guys at 20 25 minutes so therefore they have fresher legs to be able to try to come back in and compete tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day so coach k hard at work on the officials right away brian Tursi, clarence armstrong and jeff pond the crew here for game two here's felder on the attack going inside and that's gonna be an offensive foul wave off the basket on the charge So no basket and Duke with a 7-2 lead. And we talk about Coach Spinelli, Scott Spinelli, a Massachusetts native and a former Boston University player. He took over as the interim when Jim Christian was fired. BC immediately won a game. They're one and two since he became the interim head coach. Hurt with a touch. And the Eagles want to run. Jay Heath comes in averaging That's, about 15 a game. Yeah, 28 against Florida State. And he's going to be the guy. If Boston College is going to have an opportunity to knock off the Blue Devils here in Greensboro, Jay Heath is going to have to have a big performance. But DJ Stewart off already knocking down two threes, getting off to a great start in his first ACC tournament game. Freshman out of Chicago. May be a good idea to put a body on him. The way he is firing it out of the gate. Ashton Langford, formerly out of Providence College, he will draw the foul. His brother also in the lineup, Damar Langford, his younger brother. So the Blue Devils quickly out in front, 10 to 2. Boston College at 4 and 15, 2 and 11 in the ACC. And they have been heavily affected by COVID-19 at five consecutive games postponed, seven overall because of COVID. So this is only their 20th game. And that's been one of the disparities we've seen throughout many ACC teams this year. We watched Miami in game one who played 19 ACC games and was scheduled to play the 20th. Was called off at the last minute, but Miami is, and Virginia are the only two teams in the ACC this season to play everyone. These two teams met once 
on January the 6th, and it was a barn burner, one-point game between the two. C.J. Felder, who's putting pressure on Matthew Hurt, had a career night also, 24 points for him in that. Shot clock now down to five. Swung to the wing in a traveling violation. Duke will give it back to travel on Wendell Moore. So Duke with a 10-4 lead. Really interesting listening to Coach K talk about, you know, the sentimentality of walking down to this court where Duke worked out yesterday before the tournament got underway. And you'd be sentimental, too, if you've had all the success that he's had on this floor. But all-time, Mike, 65-23 and 23 in the ACC tournament with 15 titles. Big question is how many games can this edition of the Duke Blue Devils win? Aston Langford from way downtown tipped up several times and controlled by the Eagles. And he's going to be on the line. That's going to be a violation and turn it right back over to Duke. But the difference between these two teams now is Boston College with their third turnover. They're shooting 25% from the field while the Blue Devils are shooting 80% from the field early in this game. Duke with two turnovers on its own. But when you continue to shoot the basketball this well and you get more shots, that's normally going to be a recipe for success, especially once you get into tournament time. Can I tell you, by the way, how excited I am to see Allison Williams? I mean, under any circumstances, that's true. But we have not seen Allison since the tournament last year. As far as basketball is concerned, that's when we were all here and everybody's world changed. And the rest of the tournament was canceled and eventually the NCAA tournament, of course. Stewart this time in a misfire and rebound controlled by Carnick. I'm always excited to see Allison Williams, of course. Her smile lightens up the room and also it's less work that I have to do because she does all the research <laughs> Well when we come back You're gonna hear from Allison about Scott Spinelli's journey to beat 14 February 27th though got his first win in his first game as a head coach And it was a long time coming not just for the Eagles who hadn't won in 45 days since then but for Spinelli, whose career as a coach spans back to 1990, and you can see why some of the guys said it was pretty surreal in that locker room. Allie, thank you very much. Glad we got a little class on this broadcast finally with Allison Williams, Boston College. You know, with an interim coach right now, he's a really good guy. He's from Lemonster, Mass. So he is a true Bay Stater, or as we say, Lemonster. That's where he's from, and he is Boston all the way, man. And let's see how that works out. You know, if they decide to make him the everyday guy, the head coach, pull up pop by Moore, won't drop. Duke on top here, 13 to 6. And different approach for Coach K in this game. Wendell Moore is handling the majority of the ball handling responsibilities thus far in this game. We talked about his big performance against Boston College and a one-point win at Cameron Indoor after Duke was off for 20 days previously in this season and Moore's 25 points became was a difference maker he was coming off of a 1 for 21 shooting slump in the previous games but that game really turned the season around for Wendell Moore Jr. It did still scuffling beyond that three-point line only 29 percent this guy does not scuffle typically but he's missed a couple heard at 47 percent for most of the season up top, it's Karnick. He won't shoot it from out there. Heath gives it up. Shot clock at 14 for the Eagles. So far, they are three for six. Trying to add to that, but can't. And here's Goldwire, certainly one of the premier defenders, not only in this conference, but any conference. Rebound, rebound tipped and controlled by Matthew Hurt, who's taken in six per game. Four over the top. No finish there from Williams. And Mark Williams kind of rushed that one. Of course, could have come down and gone back up with the size advantage. Not many people on the Boston College lineup going to be able to contend with them. But Jay Heath answering at the other end of the floor. And just like that, it's a three-point game. And this Boston College team, you would expect for them to have some confidence against the Blue Devils when you consider you go into their place and you 
almost get a win. Of course, almost only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes. But yet, the one-point loss, I'm sure the Eagles come in with some confidence. I'll tell Bulldogs. you what, Jake, Jay Heath is very active on both ends of the floor. He just came away with a steal. Ashton Langford on the baseline and picked off. Wendell Moore with the steal. An early issue for Boston College is the turnovers. And Duke is the one team you do not want to turn the basketball over against because they can turn defense into offense very quickly as Jordan Goldwire steps up and knocks down the three. So it's Duke by six. Duke typically starting three freshmen and two sophomores. Karnick again will feed it back outside for the three, but not there. Frederick Scott into the game, the 6'8 grad out of Indiana. Baker with the bounce. That's his game beyond a three-point line. Steps inside it and drains it. And just textbook pump fake, one dribble pull up by Joey Baker. And you have to respect the shooter. So, of course, you go flying out trying to take away the three-point line, running him off. Many coaches will agree that they want you to f take tough twos. That wasn't a tough two for Joey Baker. That was about as easy as it gets. He gives it up to Ashton Langford. Carter has it rejected by Williams. Right back over to the Eagles. And a nice pass inside for the quick strike. And DeMar Langford, the freshman for two. So Duke by six. Williams sweeping into the lane and banks it in. And we'll act like Mark meant to do that, but you see the <laughs> presence of him in the interior. The Blue Devils now have a post presence. They have someone they can throw the basketball inside to to get, I'm not necessarily going to say easy buckets, but higher percentage shots. Mark Williams shooting a great percentage from the field, and not that they couldn't do that through Matthew Hurt, but Matthew Hurt is a different type of post player who normally use fadeaways to be able to beat the finish. Connick's a big body, tangles up here with Hurts. And Duke with a 20 to 12 lead over BC. And the Blue Devils operating on all cylinders early offensively. Joey Baker, the pump. Yeah, a very significant lesson is never to take this for granted. And when you consider someone who's had as much success as he had, and I mentioned to him years ago, say, hey, coach, once you get to the NCAA tournament, he stopped me mid-sentence and said, Corey, you cannot take for granted that we're going to make it. It was early in the ACC season. They did make it that year, but now looking at a team that may not make it to the NCAA tournament, but Coach K, once again, never taking it for granted, recognizing how special this opportunity is. Felder with a misfire, but a second chance coming here for the Eagles. With Duke in front by eight under ten minutes to go, and that'll go against Boston College. And OB Corey, Coach K said that when he came into the stadium yesterday, he felt nostalgia because of all the success and the memories here. And then also with what happened last year with not being able to play this tournament. And I think that's all made him appreciate the previous teams and success he's had even more. And he really believes it is an honor to be in this tournament. And you mentioned it, Corey, like so many times people want to look ahead this time of year to the NCAA tournament. And he won't ever allow his team to do that because these games mean too much to him. Allie, you got nostalgic about coming into this arena, too, because it's been a little while. Yeah, it, it was weird. I never would have expected when we left here last year that it would be a full year until I covered college basketball again. And it has. And it definitely uh, it makes you that much more thankful for this game and this job and the opportunity to cover um, these players. It was so nice just to connect with these guys again throughout the past week over Zoom, um, over the phone calls. It just made me realize how much I missed being a part of this League. Well, that was wonderful having you back. It really is. And, uh, you know, Coach K talked about this, too. And that one swished in by Stewart. He's gotten off to a nice start here. That, you know, you have to value your relationships, right? That's what he said. That's what he's telling his guys about how to handle this last year of the pandemic. Value your relationships and remember how important they are, those pers personal relationships to you. 
And Allison, of course, Coach K got a little more nostalgic once he saw you. We were on the Zoom yesterday. He just perks up when he sees <laughs> Allison. I mean, he, of course, he treats me like yesterday's garbage. Huh? Oh, it's just Corey again. He sees Allison. He perks up. I mean, a completely different guy on the Zoom at that point. I had to call Coach out and say, wait a minute, I didn't get this type of greeting. But, you know, in normal fashion, he always has a, a good comeback for me. Well, he sees you quite frequently. So that, that can be part of it. I mean, I haven't seen Coach K in a year, so it was good to, to connect with him. And I love, too, what he said, guys. He said this year we just want to keep getting back on the bus because it's interesting. He's got his team still staying in Durham for this tournament. However long, you know, they last here in Greensboro, they're not staying here. It felt like it was a safer environment to keep them um, in Durham, in the hotel where they've been staying throughout the season. So they're busing back and forth for each one of these games. Yeah. I think all players and coaches, they love that. I mean, that's how it really starts for you back in, you know, high school, getting on the bus, right? You know, taking a trip and going up against your arch rivals. You do it, you get on the bus, you win the game, you know, you come home on the bus. Duke on top here, 23 to 14, 8.43 to go in the first half. Been a strange and fascinating basketball season for Duke. Long jumper on the way, and that won't drop, man. A foul underneath. But, Obi, one thing to notice, you look, we got a shot at the Duke Blue Devil bench. Every member of the team standing up. And, again, this is not a team that is ready for their season to be finished. And, again, when they, they've been through the struggles, have been well documented. But this is a group that is together. They're trying to find a way to keep playing. And as Allison mentioned, get back on the bus. Well, that starts with just this one game. They'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, if they're able to be that fortunate to make it. But right now, you can see everyone in the white uniform locked in and trying to come away with the win here this afternoon. Coach firing away from the corner, the freshman from Leesburg, Virginia. And we just had it up there on the graphic a moment ago. You know, Duke 4-1 in ACC first-round games, and that's a tiny number. It's only five games. It catches it you by surprise. They didn't yeah, play in the first round. <laughs> yeah, that goes back to first round games from way back in the day. <laughs> They're always right. getting a bye. <laughs> That's exactly right. Let's do it up quick stump seeds coming your way for our finale tonight. Round two tomorrow. And of course, Sean McDonough and Jay Billis and Dan Schulman will be bringing you the tournament along with Corey the rest of the way after today and Allison Williams as well. Should be thoroughly entertaining and a great tournament. Wide open tournament, Corey. I agree. And when you consider coming into this tournament, you know, Virginia gets the number one seed on the last day. Florida State falls at Notre Dame. But even more so, you look at there were 10 guys who really were in the conversation for ACC Player of the Year this year. And that is what makes it so wide open is because you don't, don't necessarily have one dominant team nor one dominant player. So much parity within the ACC this year. I mean, you look at the Blue Devils as a 10 seed, but this is a team that can beat anyone in this ACC tournament, and they're looking to see if they can find a way to catch fire and move through and try to win five games in five days. It's never happened before in the ACC tournament, but one team has won four in four days, and it happened to be coached by the GOAT himself, Mike Krzyzewski, but back in 2017. Stewart's cooking early, gets a nice feed off to Williams, who slams it down. And right now, you see the freshmen for the Blue Devils growing up. D.J. Stewart, Mark Williams, Jeremy Roach. These guys now have a year of experience under their belt and recognizing how they have to play to be successful in college basketball. D.J. Stewart, Mark Williams, and Roach, all three of these starters for the Blue Devils as freshmen off to a great start in this their first ACC tournament game. Kamari Williams getting inside, a 6'7 sophomore. He's the son of the former Maryland All-American, Walt Williams. Yeah, he knows a little bit about the ACC tournament. His dad put on many times in the ACC tournament. Walt Williams, one of the best players I've played against in the ACC as a freshman. I can remember him going for that stretch of eight straight 30-point games. Of course, our Virginia Cavaliers happen to be two of those 30-point games. So you know, that that that, yes. Oh, what a tough <laughs> shot by Ashton Langford. Somehow spun it up there and then it got real close to a photographer. Yeah, nice recognition by Langford to know the shot blocker was coming, getting it high off the glass. 
Coach with the kick out. Duke on top, 29-18. BC already with eight turnovers. Moore is going to drive it. Shot clock down to six. And way downtown, Roach can't connect. And Scott Spinelli with a lot of defensive energy on that side of the floor, urging his team on, but they turn it right over. As Duke yeah. returns the favor, giving the basketball back. Back and forth we go. You're right about that energy, too. He's off the charts, as Williams can't hit. Talking with him is a lot of fun because he oozes that. And, you know, when they won the game, the first game back, you know, after the firing of Jim Christian and they had a COVID pause there, it was a gigantic outburst for him. Talk about enthusiastic. He was hurt again for three. Yes, well, let him keep shooting it. He's going to hit a lot of them. Absolutely. You know, one of the best shooters in not only the ACC, but in Duke history right now, tied with Shane Battier, a 41.6 career three-point shooter, is Matthew Hurt. And, of course, when you start talking about the history of the Blue Devils, it's a number of great shooters that have come through this program. Matthew Hurt, first team all ACC, named the most improved player in the league as well, 19 points, six rebounds a game, put on all that additional size, but 25 pounds, and it has paid off. And a tie up on that play, 32-18, Duke in charge. The offensive rebound, always the best time to shoot the three, especially when you've got a guy lining up like Matthew Hurt who knocks down his first three of the game. Six nine sophomore from Rochester, Minnesota. Look at that improvement we're talking about. OB. Yeah, no question. Yes, yeah, uh, Allison, impressive what he's been able to do from a year ago. It is, and, and you mentioned it. He put on weight, and that was a focus for him in the offseason. He got his weight up, and he got his shots up. He gained about 20 pounds, and he said he got about 1,000 shots off every single day. He did it when he was back home in Minnesota, and it was really a, a family affair. He had his dad out there chasing down balls for him. His brother, Michael, who played at Minnesota, was doing drills. His sister, who's a junior in high school, joined him as well. Mom, everyone, he said, was involved. And he admitted that it really helped him get better spending time with his family. It was such a unique part of the offseason and all this COVID pause and everything. His players got to spend time with their family. He said that was really a silver lining. And the improvements he's shown this year are a credit not just to his work, but his family's as well. You know, you, you put on all that size, and you got to eat a lot of calories to do that. And you're, you're packing it on for a reason, you know, adding to the frame and the long ACC schedule. A thousand shots a day, Corey, isn't that going to start taking that off, too? Well, it will definitely take it off, but when you're building muscle, you need the cardio as well. But here's my problem. If I'm Matthew Hurt's father, and again, of course, you want to help your son in any way you possibly can. I'm not chasing rebounds. Part of your cardiovascular conditioning is you miss a shot, you chase it. I'm not going to be the guy getting in shape if you miss. You're going to do that on your own. That's one of my rules. Corey Alexander Basketball School, I do not rebound for anybody. You miss it, you go get it. Traveling violation here. I don't think he missed a lot. Duke on top. 35-21 over Boston College here in round one. Here, you have to spend a lot of time with Mark Turgeon as well. That's good news for him. Getting to learn alongside an outstanding head coach. Duke on top, 34-21. You know, Boston College going to the zone. But with the way Duke can shoot the basketball, especially that guy, you've got to identify. DJ, DJ Stewart was doing his damage from beyond the arc early in this game, now getting intimate with the rim. Yeah, above it. They're not locating him very well, Corey. No, they are not. Again, when you have to pay so much attention to Matthew Hurt, you often don't have the ability to be able to find the other lethal scorers. And right now, DJ Stewart off to a great start in his first ACC tournament game. Well, Scott with a jump shot. The 6'8 graduate. He's only played six games this season, but he's a guy who can shoot the threes, a transfer from Ryder. And Scott showing a nice touch early, already knocked down a three and then stepping into the mid-range with two buckets for him in this game. But when you're getting him that close to the rim, Mark Williams is always going to have success. Five for six for him 
as he continues to shoot a great percentage, 8, 11 points already for Mark here in the first half. In his last four games, averaging 16 points and seven rebounds. Coach K will take that any day from the big man, the seven-foot freshman. James Karnick again, getting a lot of touches. Nifty pass and a foul on the play as Williams will be headed to the line. Kamari Williams to shoot. Williams on the other end, Mark Williams. And a great find by Joy Baker getting in and more importantly, avoiding the defenders, not turning it over, but putting it right where his teammate can get it and finish it off. Mark Williams with the finish. And Mark Williams really has been a great story this year for the Blue Devils. Once he stepped into the lineup, they were able to improve defensively as well as offensively. The 16 points per game, 76% from the field, and the 28 minutes for him over the last four games. But he's really become, you know, an important factor to what they're able to do, especially on the defensive end of the floor. A foul here. They're going to get Matthew Hurt for the personal in the scrum. You know, Coach K was talking yesterday about Mark Williams, and he said he's not going to be just a good player. He's going to be a terrific player. I mean, really, really good. Well, one of the things, you know, I would expect for Mark to be back next year. I know his parents, his family values education. Now, again, I can't say that he'll be here for four years. But yet, when you look at his sister Elizabeth and what she was able to do at Duke, Mark's still chasing Big Sis's <laughs> shadow. <Yeah. laughs> That's going to be for a while, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. But I, I, I would like to see him stick around one more year. You know, we talk about this Duke team, and we mentioned it a little bit with Coach K yesterday. And, of course, he didn't want to talk about next year. He's focused on bringing the energy to this group. But, you know, everyone talks about how much the ACC needs for Duke and North Carolina to be successful. Well, if the right guys stay in this program, Duke is not only going to be successful, they'll be really good next year. Allison? Well, you guys mentioned Mark's sister, Elizabeth. She was quite the player at Duke. Freshman of the year in 2012, defensive player of the year in 2015, and a four-time first-team All-ACC member. She's now with the Atlanta Dream. And I asked him, I was like, all right, so who's a better defender? Because she was defensive player of the year. And he got a big old smile. He's a great smile. And he said, I got to save me. I was like, are you sure about that? He's like, I, I got to save me. I got to have confidence in myself. But he did say the first time he ever got to come and, and, and watch a game and Cameron endorsed stadium was when he watched his sister he was that loud kid behind the bench and he said when they played UNC is when I realized it's a special place yeah he, he's the one who revealed that she was going to do with the t-shirt so he's been in on it all the way through him offered great passes from his teammates taking matters into his own hands often at times but giving Duke a post presence that they missed early in this season but I've got to go back to Allison Williams Allison I'm a big fan of Mark Williams, but he told you a lie. He was not as good as his sister early in the career. No, I have to admit, I think he knew that. <laughs> if you would have seen his smile, I think he just could not quite go there and give her the nod, but he knew it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a little brother. No little brother can do that, but again, we all know the truth. Elizabeth was the truth, and Mark will be at Duke. Yeah, great family. A tremendous history here at Duke and they lead it 38 to 25 Boston College with the ball though last half minute of the first half and a foul on Wendell Moore Boston College almost upset Duke then ranked in the top 25 back in January final score is 83 to 82 it's a game that Duke actually won more at the foul line than anything else they hit 25 foul shots and that's an area where Duke really hasn't beaten many teams throughout this year. But I can remember watching that game back in January and seeing how easily Boston College was getting to the rim. C.J. Felder was special attacking the rim. Jay Heath, whoever, when they were attacking the rim, they were getting everything they want. This is a different Duke team when you've got Mark Williams back there anchoring the defense and, of course, contesting shots at the basket. Second one coming for DeMar Langford. He makes the pair. BC hanging in there, 38 to 27, and a timeout. And remember, we've got a third game coming up tonight. Well, it's one of the best shooters in the ACC. So 
the numbers for Duke from beyond the arc have been the difference in this game thus far. Heard on the bench for the last half minute of the play and trying to get inside Ashton Lankford. He'll commit the foul. Six three junior. He is a native of Massachusetts out of Worcester, Mass. Now one guy hit has really recruited the the Northeast, the Upper Northeast, exceptionally well throughout his great career. Is Mike Bray, Notre Dame. Got some that he really has. good players out of Massachusetts. Yeah, that he has as well as out of Demath the Catholic, his alma mater, no doubt, in the Washington D.C. area. And of course, former assistant for Mike Susseski at Duke. Here's Baker trying to lean into one, gives it up instead. Stewart's been their star along with Williams, and that jumper right in front of the end of the first half. Another three. Duke has been on target. They lead it 41 to 27. Goldwire sticking that one very confidently. Both ends of the court really pleased with the defensive at their effort. And he wants to make sure they stay locked in on Jay Heath. Held him to just four points in that first half. That will be key. He said we have to keep playing hard because BC is not going to give up. Well, Corey, you certainly don't expect them to quit on it, but Duke's getting such contributions from the youngsters. Yeah, they really have and DJ Stewart got off to a great start knocking down the first three For the Blue Devils and went made three out of his first four But their three-point shooting has been special in this game and now as you see Stewart trying to attack the rim Boston College got to find a way to stay with guys and keep them in front because Mark Williams has been able to benefit off of a number of nice drive and drop-offs to the big five BC leaving it behind and on the drive. Oh, tough, tough ball there by Wendell Moore as he took the hit. And the 6'5 sophomore from Charlotte able to get up very quickly. And half picks up another foul. And now, of course, he's going to have to be a little more tentative, especially on the defensive end, to stay on the floor. Moore very good at the line, 83% this season. And of course, probably the number one topic of discussion coming into this ACC tournament, Greensboro, I think anyway, Corey, was not necessarily who's going to win among the top four seeds. It was could Duke use this tournament to catapult into the NCAA tournament. Joe Lenardi saying that he believes Duke has to win five consecutive games, five and five in order to get to the NCAA tournament, you don't necessarily believe they have to win five, do you? Well, I'm not going to argue with Joy Brackets, but one thing I do believe is if they are able to win this game and then move on, the next three games that Duke would have to play would be against teams that are in the tournament field. And so if you talk about winning four of the next five games, but playing in that fifth game, in the championship game, I can't imagine that that would not increase Duke's net rating. Of course, their strength of schedule goes up, and they would have more wins over those quad one opponents. If you get three of those, now you're five and five against quad one teams. So now that resume seems to be one that would get you into the NCAA tournament. And again, I've said this all year long. I firmly believe that there would be no better team to have in the what used to be first four, but now the first round of the NCAA tournament as an 11 seed, better than the Duke Blue Devils. It sounded a little like you were arguing with Joey Brackets there, just just nope. a little bit. You know, nope. you said you went mm -mm. It's just a little bit. Nope, Joey Brackets is my guy. I do not argue with Joey Brackets. <laughs> <laughs> he knows much better about all of that, does way more research than I do. Oh. Well, he'll wear you down. You're going to get five emails a day from, <laughs> from Joe Lenardi. You know that's the I, case. You just open the one at the end of the day that says final. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's what I do. Well, tickets will be punched today. They include the Northeast Conference, a championship being played at 7 at ESPN2, and a West Coast Conference championship, which is BYU against the number one team in the country, Gonzaga. That's also coming up later on tonight. So a lot of tickets being punched for Horizon, the Summit League, among others. Great time of the year. So champ week raging here. And Gonzaga, the number one team in the country tonight.
on ESPN at 9 o'clock, the West Coast Conference. And the championship really good, game. Really good start for Boston College here in the second half. Scott Spinelli has his team playing with tremendous energy to start the half. And we've talked about the Blue Devils, but you can tell Boston College, they don't want their season to end either. We've got a number of guys here playing with tremendous energy, tremendous effort. And you can see it's becoming contagious along their bench as well. Oh, Stewart, just sweet getting his own shot like that. The freshman to make it 45 to 32. Well, BC has to try and match the coach's energy, Scott Spinelli. They're going to be an offensive foul on the Eagles here. And it goes right back over to Duke. Not possible. Can't happen, Obi. No way those guys can match Spinelli's energy. <laughs> I saw Spinelli on the earlier possession sliding up and down the sidelines, getting it done defensively in a stance like he used to when he was a star at Boston University. Although he was built like a power forward playing on the perimeter. <laughs> built like a defensive lineman, actually. <laughs> Tipped out of play. 17-29 left in this one. And still to come, we've got Notre Dame and Wake Forest tonight at 7 o'clock. You know, Mike Brace had a lot of success in the tournament, the ACC tournament. He's done some magical things trying to do that again. Felder lines up a long one, not there for him. Williams snatches the rebound. Duke moved the ball exceptionally well in the first half. They're doing it again in the second. Williams with the dunk. And that's such a luxury when you have a guy that can be a rim runner and catching lobs because anytime you have dribble penetration, the guards know that they have an easy outlet. Throw the basketball up to Mark Williams if his defender comes over to help. Not only is that an easy bucket for Williams, but those assist numbers go up for you as a guard. Ashton Lankford off the fake. He'll take the hit, and he'll be at the line. See Jeremy Roach on the attack and just knowing, hey, I can just throw it up to my big fella. No one from Boston College can contest him. He goes to get it. Mark Williams flushes it. And that's it. You know, a weapon that Duke did not have early in the season when I say didn't have, meaning that Mark Williams wasn't playing heavy minutes. The last 12 games of the regular season, Mark Williams became such a factor for this team. We talked about what he does defensively, challenging shots, giving them rim protection, but offensively, he has continued to grow, you know, by leaps and bounds, even from where he was, you know, this time two years ago in high school. And so much better on the offensive end of the floor. So more to walk it up here for the Blue Devils going after the 12th win of the season. 11 and 11 coming in. 10 seed, the lowest they've ever been. Shot clock down to 11. Bird off the face. Keeps on driving it. And a foul. We'll put him at the line. With 16.25 to go here. And that's really the maturation of Matthew Hurt. That's a play a year ago. He would have taken every opportunity that he had to shoot the three. But recognizing that the defense is going to come flying at him because he is such a great three-point shooter, just a simple pump fade and attacking the basket, getting to the free throw line. And you, talk, you and Allison talked about the adding 25 pounds to his frame over the summer. He is much more prepared to take those hits, take that contact now than he was a year ago. Drops that one in. Duke leading at 49 to 34. Get a great game near the end of the regular season in a game Duke could eventually lose in overtime to Louisville. But he had 37 points in that contest. Absolutely cooking. Pull up, pop short off the front of that iron. And another whistle. A lot of fouls here in the second half. You mentioned that Louisville game. Matthew Hurt fouled out of that game. And again, that was a game that was hanging in the balance possession by possession at the end. Matthew Hurt fouls out. Carly Jones makes a number of big plays for Louisville. Louisville gets the win, you know, in Cameron. But if Hurt doesn't foul out of the game, the fortunes of that could have been much different for the Blue Devils, who lost a lot of close games this year. Eight of their nine ACC losses were by seven points or less. And so this season that has been... You know, a struggle for the Blue Devils could have easily turn on the number of possessions in each and every one of those games. Timeout. What a career. 
Duke basketball winning two national titles while he was there. Football program experiencing one of its most successful eras. They made bowl appearances in six of seven seasons. And congratulations, Kevin White, on a marvelous career. Of course, can't forget the fact that he's also the proud father of Mike White, the head coach for the Florida Gators, who enjoying another great season at Florida, and I'm sure wants to wish congratulations on to his father. I'm sure he's already done that, but Mike White, one of the best in the country, one of the best people in his coaching professions that you know, and I'm sure the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Yep. It's going to be a very tough position to fill for Duke. It's going to be a highly coveted position. Let's do it again. Earth fighting for the rebound. Saved it. Nice job, Moore, from the corner will bury it. And Wendell Moore gets the bucket, but Matthew Hurt with the effort. And again, these are plays that we didn't see from Matthew Hurt a year ago, but he has so much more confidence in that new frame. You talk about the 25 pounds, a better rebounder, and more prepared to take the contact, not willing to, I mean, you know, more willing to stick his nose into the physical action. And because he does it on that last possession, his team comes up with a big three. Off the DJ Stewart miss, you see Matthew Hurt flying in, unable to corral the rebound, but the presence of mind to be able to get it to his teammate, Wendell Moore, who knocks down the corner three and continues to improve on his shooting as the season's gone along. Now Duke has made 19 field goals on 13 assists. As Corey likes to say, sharing the sugar. <laughs> I would like to say it, but Corey didn't come up with it. That's all you. Coleman with the block there. 52 to 36. So very nice defense. And the Irish are in the house. Notre Dame, number 11 seed, about to take on the 14 seed Wake Forest. That's coming up next right here on the ACC Network. A couple players right there. Ryan Humphrey, who was a big time player. For Mike Brand Irish. Nicola Jogo right behind him, who had a great senior day. And the Irish were able to knock off Florida State. Look big, big win there. Yeah, 83 73 on Saturday. You had that game, Corey. And Wake Forest will come in with a seven game losing streak. Been a very tough year for Coach Forbes and Wake Brighter days ahead. Baker tried to keep it alive by tipping that, and they will have it. Fourteen oh five left here in game number two game one went to Miami as they held off the Pitt Panthers Made a lot of foul shots down the stretch made a lot of big plays down the stretch and what was a close game most of the day And so Miami and Jim Laranega moving on to round two to take on Clemson the five seed tomorrow at 2 30 the drive and kick to Stewart and the lane opens up a bit. What a smart play that was to attack like that. We had a smart play on the offensive end. Terrible play defensively when two players run away from the guy with the basketball, giving DJ Stewart, who's the leading scorer in this game, for Duke. Now an easy bucket. Probably the easiest one he's had all night. He took the swing for Felder. Goes airborne and a whistle too. He'll go to the line, CJ Felder. With his biggest moment of this one. A great ball movement by Boston College. CJ Felder, only his second field goal of the game. But as you see the kick out, you watch two Boston College defenders leave DJ Stewart, who gets into an easy one. Joey Baker attracting attention in the corner. And taking the attention away from Stewart, who's been on fire here all afternoon. Three fouls for Hertz. So he's got a lengthy sit coming. But, but it'll be one of the things that we've seen in this game. And, and Matthew Hurt, not that he hasn't played well, he just hasn't had big scoring numbers. But it's been the other guys who have stepped up. Mark Williams, DJ Stewart have had very good offensive games. Well, on the flip side of that, Duke has done a good job defensively on the stars for Boston College and Jay Heath, as well as CJ Felder. But no one else for the Eagles has really been able to step up and have that type of production, which is the reason why Duke holds a 16-point lead. Shot clock down to six for Duke. 
Stewart wants to negotiate. Gave it up for the gold wire jumper. <laughs> He's able to bury it. And Duke has gotten production from so many different players in this game. Coach K has played 10 different players. And everyone getting involved in the action, both defensively and offensively. Jordan Goldwire with three three-point field goals already in this one. Well, now BC is in that serious danger zone, aren't they? 57 to 38 Duke. They have really lengthened out the lead here, approaching the 12 minute mark. Goldwire looking inside. Williams really commanding the ball. Really wants it there. Goldwire open for three. Absolutely swishes that one home. And a timeout, I should say so. Duke. Now 60 o'clock here on the ACC Network. Round two tomorrow at noon. Corey's back to work. Is that you and Sean McDonough at noon tomorrow? That will be me and S. Dot McDonough. Of course, I have taken all of my favorite analysts, especially those coming from Syracuse. They all have hip hop names. You, of course, the notorious <laughs> DOB. Right. <laughs> Which I'll never live down. Yeah. I'm sorry, did I call you an analyst? I did they call me an analyst, but oh, yeah, I'll take no, that, you know, play by way, play. Way wrong with that, I can do it all, believe me. Yeah, this yeah. is true. You can. I, I heard you do it all on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you went solo. I, I did hear that. Unfortunately, <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah. We lost Dan Dockage for a little while. You know, and COVID-19, it happens, you know, this this day and age. You've done it. Even, you know, I've, I've gone away in games where you had to do the play-by-play. -play, so, yeah. You, you did it better solo than I did. I was, I was so waiting for you to get back. Yeah, I wasn't waiting for Dockers to get back, by the way, when you were doing the solo. <laughs> I will look, look forward to hearing you and Shawnee Mack coming at noon tomorrow in the day games. Of course, uh, Jay Billis and Dan Schulman will have the night sessions as well throughout the tournament. And should be a great run. Really looking forward to just sitting back and being a fan. It's going to be fun. I believe we're going to have a fun week in Greensboro and going to be interesting to see who walks away with the championship as Henry Coleman gets involved in the action. The finish of the flush for the young fella out of Richmond, Virginia. The freshman. Been a day where the freshman, of course, Duke has so many anyway, but they have been the brightest stars for the Blue Devils here against BC. And that's a good thing for them to be able to have this type of game in their first action because, of course, the competition's only going to get stiffer as the ACC tournament goes on. But when you have your first game allows you to come out and play well, you're able to build that confidence. And right now, Duke playing a tremendous confidence up 22 over Boston College. Well, Duke is closing in. Richmond and sixth man of the year, Scotty Barnes of FSU. Most improved player went to Matthew Hurt. That was hotly contested, that honor. And a coach of the year, Mike Young. Great job at Virginia Tech. COVID issues. Fought his way through it. And did a heck of a job. Hurt right on target with that long shot to make it 65 to 40. And hold it up, shooter. Matthew Hurt got to make sure the scorebook knows exactly who shot that. That's the way you do it. You hold the follow through up. Even if you're running back down the floor, they need to make sure they see 21 on that jersey to put the three beside it. Felder can't answer. So that's the theory behind it. You got to oh, make yeah. sure the official score gets it right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we see him mess it up every now and then. You got to make sure you hold that follow through. Also helps to guide the shot into the basket, but you know, get more yeah, so that. about getting yeah. <laughs> getting your points, <laughs> <laughs> getting credit, proper credit. Coach over the top, Coleman getting some minutes here, shovels it back outside. Baker back in. Boy, they moved the ball brilliantly in this game. They really have, and again, not to say that this is a great Boston College defensive team, but yet the way that Duke has moved the basketball, and this is a team that Duke coming off of a 20-day break. You know struggle with at Cameron and you see Matthew hurt You know when when you have it shot the basketball great as he has not today Sometimes you put a little more effort into each and every shot. That was the case, but a beautiful look at Matthew hurt who One of the top two shooters I say in the ACC this year alongside Sam Hauser who's probably the best shooter In the league this season yeah, Sam Hauser had one of those I can't miss games on Saturday in the clutch too in a big way as Virginia needed the win 
in order to win the top seed and take the regular season title. And he came through with a big, big performance. On the drive and kick back outside for Baker. Shot clock, a factor here, down to six. Third on the drive, Coleman's open from the corner. 67 to 40, Duke. And I've heard you talk about it this season, and Jay Billis has done a great job breaking it down, too. You know, when you look at Matthew Hurt's shot, how closely it resembles Larry Bird's shot. Well, when you start talking about the best shooters, and again, you know, Larry Bird in the conversation as best shooters of all time. Of course, that distinction, in my opinion, goes to Steph Curry, but Larry Bird definitely right there at the top. With the high release that both of them have allows them to be able to shoot over defenders, especially guys trying to close out to them, but yet not changing their shot any whatsoever. And Matthew Hurt, I mean, it's scary the similarity between he and Larry Bird and you see that high release keeping the ball up but it allows you to be able to get shots off quicker because you don't dip you see so many players dip the basketball down to their waist Matthew Hurt, Larry Bird don't bother with the dip they just let it fly and I'm not calling Matthew Hurt, Larry Bird I'm just no, saying the yep. shots are very similar and they get similar results it would not be fair to be comparing Larry Legend to uh, very many other players, quite frankly. But Baker will lock that one. That's certainly his game and absolutely drains the three. Although I was watching the three-point contest at the NBA All-Star game the other day. I, I, I got to tell you, it is unbelievable watching Steph shoot the basketball. When there's nobody on him, it's even more incredible. The, the thing never touches the rim. Never, ever touches the rim. Absolutely. But the, to be completely honest, Obi, he may not be the best shooter in his family. And I know you're thanking Dell, but that's yeah. not either. either. Seth may be the best shooter in the family. And Seth Curry, so? who, who, well, I, I will tell you this. Dell and I were having a conversation when Seth was transferred. And he was leaving Liberty. And I was talking to him about where he was going to end up going this and another. He ends up coming to Duke, has a very good career for the Blue Devils. But Dell in that conversation told me that he thought that Seth as a catch-and-shoot guy was better than Steph. Now, Steph is better off the dribble, and Dell was a great catch-and-shoot. What he Steph was. does off the dribble is different than, you know, I mean, anyone other than probably Chris Jackson, Mahmoud Abdul Raouf in history. But when you think about just catch and shoot, it may be Seth. And Seth's career three point percentage in the NBA is actually higher than Steph's. Is. So the numbers support it. I would not have guessed that. I would not have believed that until you said that. Rebounded away here by Hurt. But it was just magnificent watching him shoot the ball i mean i've i've never seen anybody quite that good i mean it's, it every great shooter is gonna once in a while nick the rim everything was was tearing the nets and you're like it's so true and uh, what a great great player oh no question about it and again you know steph also has to take more difficult shots than does Steph, <laughs> because right. all all defensive eyes are on him when he's the number one target for the Golden State Warriors, Seth gets to benefit from being, you know, playing off of other guys. But to say the least, great shooting family. Yes. I was a huge fan of Dell's growing up, too. I, I thought, boy, he was the epitome of a classy player. I just loved watching him play. He was as smooth as snow down a bamboo leaf watching him play. Well, it's been a lot of three-point shooting talk for good reason. From the locker room with what the team said is stomach issues, but he has checked back into the game, so he'll be back out on the court, and he'll be there with his brother, Damar Langford Jr. Now, this is actually the first time the two have really played on, on an organized basketball team together. They're just a few years apart in age, but Makai went away to prep school to play basketball. His brother stayed home to play in high school, and Makai said that when he found out that his brother would have the opportunity to join him at BC, he was beyond thrilled it's been the best part about this year is the two brothers being able to bond on the court gotta be really really cool both of those guys out of Worcester Massachusetts and DeMar played at the highly competitive Brewster Academy in Wolfboro New Hampshire that's the prep school that Allie was talking about 
And on the baseline, a traveling violation. Duke has hit 14 threes. That's a season high to lead it 73-41. And they've shared the basketball extremely well when you consider what the Blue Devils have been able to do in this game. 20 assists on 27 made field goals. 14 of those 27 makes from beyond the three-point arc. So I'm sure Coach K loves the offensive action they've gotten, but more importantly, the defensive effort he's gotten from this team right now. Boston College with 41 points with just under six remaining in this game. I'm not sure he could have asked for more from his Blue Devil defense, not one player from Boston College in double figures in this game. Yeah, you have to say, I mean, Duke's going to have plenty of doubters that they can rip off five consecutive wins. Set that aside for a moment. You've got to be impressed with how cleanly they've played today, how well they've shot the three-pointers, got a lot of support off their bench, too. Their freshmen were the early stars in the first half. Certainly Stewart and Williams were. And then they just kind of blew it open about eight or nine minutes ago. Rolling to the basket, the big Justin Vanderbon, a seven-foot freshman out of Northbridge, Massachusetts. Stewart still leading the way with 17. Williams with 13 for Duke. But the one thing that you like about this effort, and we mentioned it early in the game, for the Blue Devils, they're getting a lot of guys playing time. Ten players have played so far for Duke. And more importantly, if you keep the minutes 30 and under for everyone, that should allow you an opportunity to be able to come in much fresher in tomorrow's game where they're going to have a much tougher task going up against the Louisville Cardinals. Seventy five forty three here with under five minutes to go. And just keep on raining three pointers. They can't miss from out there. Already a season high for Duke. 15 triples and At this point if you're coach K, you're asking your guys to save some of that <laughs> You don't want to shoot them all out here in the first round knowing that you're gonna move on With a tough game ahead of you tomorrow yep, Take it on Louisville and that'll Roll on in for Jeremy Roach another freshman And another McDonald's High School All-American for Coach K. He was about to win his 66th game in the ACC tournament and improved to 66 and 23 all time. AC Network exclusive coverage of the Clemson Pro Day from the indoor practice facility, which is amazing. All draft eligible Tigers get to showcase their skills. Brandon Bell Scouts, remember Trevor Lawrence already had his pro day workout February 12. Will not be participating. He's going to do just fine at the next level. I think Trevor Lawrence did his pro day before he had surgery, correct? Correct. On his non throwing shoulder. I've been inside that practice facility and watched him work up close. Of course, they've got tremendous wide receivers, but watching him throw these fade patterns in the corner of the end zone, which required the receivers, three or four of them, to dive and make the catch while dragging, you know, foot, making sure they're inbounds, practicing that. He did like 14 in a row, and every one of them was perfect. Couldn't, couldn't believe it watching him do that. He's pretty good. Yeah, I agree that he's definitely pretty good, and, um, you know, I'm also pretty certain that he will be the number one pick heading to the Jacksonville Jaguars, but will Will yep. they go off also after Alex Smith to be a mentor? Yeah. Urban Meyer's history with Alex Smith, of course, we, we yeah. know their history. Right. Coaching him at Utah, I think that would be a perfect mentor for Trevor Lawrence, mobile quarterback. Look at me going off football knowledge on you. I know you know your football, but you're sitting there going, wow. You yeah, know? I know a couple things. And my guy just got paid, by the way. Dak just got paid, yeah. Yes, he certainly yes. did. <laughs> 80 to 47. 
And how about guy. this? Yeah, a couple of changes here for Duke and Mike Savarino, who's Coach K's grandson, getting into his second game of the season. And according to available research by the Duke Blue Devils athletic staff, Coach K is the only coach to have his grandson playing for it in Division so, One basketball. Yeah. So yet another first for Mike Shevsky. <laughs> Incredible. That list goes on and on of the firsts for Coach K. But this is one very close to his heart, no question about it. His grandson, six feet, 185, and a sophomore. And I think it's pretty clear that Coach K is still focused on the games, but the family is here to watch. <laughs> and Mickey taking pictures, of course, yes. making sure gets her grandson out there on the court. That's pretty cool. That's very that is, cool. That is, that is very cool. Now BC going to their bench as well here down the stretch. So Duke can get ready for another showdown with Louisville. And the last time they met, it was at Cameron Indoor, and the game went overtime near the end of the regular season, and Louisville prevailed. Harley Jones was the man in that one. He had 25 points, so we look forward to the rematch. Look at the bench for Duke. As pumped up as it gets, Keenan Worthington getting in there. And the bench is resounding all over the building, you know, and we, for these guys we, who never get a chance to play. We mentioned earlier today that everyone on the Duke roster was standing up on the sideline. And I'm not sure if they've sat down the entire game. They've been standing up cheering on their teammates the entire time. And the starters and the guys who are normally in the rotation continuing to do the same for the guys who don't get as many minutes as Patrick Tepay is able to finish off the dunk on the interior and you can see this is the time that you really cherish you know it's the fact when everyone gets to be involved in the action guys who come to practice on a daily basis but don't see the benefit of it in playing games and now getting to cheer for them and you see the reaction from the bench after the basket and of course Jordan Goldwater, DJ Stewart, <laughs> Joy Becker, these guys are having a ball yeah you you would have thought that DJ Stewart just nailed the game when he shot at the buzzer to win a national championship, you know <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is definitely very cool And again that just speaks to the culture of this program again it, We know that it hasn't been the normal Duke year. It hasn't been the normal year period Let's talk about that, but you know Knowing that the struggles that the Blue Devils have had this year But you still see the culture shining through and that's one of the things that coach case talked to us about all season long that his program was not built on all successes. You know, there were a lot of failures that led to those successes in coming back, and this is another one of those years that he feels as though will be the failure that leads to more success. So tomorrow, kicking off the games will be the eight seed Syracuse and the nine seed NC State at noontime in the ACC Network And that will be followed by Miami and Clemson at 2:30, at 6:30 Duke and Louisville And then a winner of Notre Dame and Wake Forest to battle North Carolina at 9 p.m And Boston College with the final moments of a very very tough season for BC Scott Spinelli taking over as the interim head coach Massachusetts native when the head coach Jim Christian was fired in the middle of February BC such a, a tremendous school you know so very comparable to Duke academically and in terms of the environment and expectations and, and just great institutions in both places Long way to go for a BC to try and catch up basketball wise. That's for sure And Duke continues to try and pour things on here with the bench 85 to 49 with 43.9 uh, point eight to go 
Time for a look at our Zaxby's player of the game, and he got off to a very quick start, D.J. Stewart. Now he is a world-class cheerleader for his teammates, but the freshman played awfully well, 17 points and four assists. He really did, and not just what he did offensively, but also defensively. You know, he was one of the defenders. I'm not saying the only one, but one of the defenders on Jay Heath, and that's really been the difference in this Blue Devil team is what they've done defensively in this game and be interesting to see if that same type, life, type of defensive effort can carry over tomorrow against Louisville. Michael Savarino with his first career point, by the way, with that free throw. Getting into the scoring column in the ACC tournament. So a half minute to play, Duke in a blowout. That was anticipated that they would play very well here against BC and now trying to make it five wins in five days according to Joel Lenardi. That's what they have to do to get to the NCAA tournament. That is quite a mountain to climb, but they have you know, taken that first big step. Got to win the first one. And as Allison mentioned earlier, Duke is not staying in Greensboro, so it will be the bus back to Durham. 55-minute drive to stay back into what has been their bubble all season long to do it all over once again tomorrow coach k saying that hey he he knew that they were going to get the right food he knew they were going to get the right treatment and they were comfortable with where they were staying so they would gladly make this ride each and every game and the more rides they make the better chances they have of keeping their season up. seconds here in Greensboro of our second game of the day all Duke Blue Devils they win this one resoundingly by a final score of 86 to 51 over Boston College Duke now one game over 500 at 12 and 11 the season over for Scott Spinelli and the Eagles